today we are going to see how to create the Yasu wind wall. Not these wind walls, these wind walls. You know, the one that cancels pretty much any ability on League of Legends? Yeah, that one. I'm Gabriel Aguirre, a VFX artist that is currently developing Rabbit's Tail, by the way, links below for more, and I'm gonna show you how to recreate a fan-made version of Yasu Wall in Unity Game Engine. It's also a great way to learn how to create wind effects. And if you want to get your hands on this project, it is all available on my Patreons page. There's plenty of visual effects, it's an awesome library for your games or to study. Links below. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. As you can see, this one requires some meshes. And a specific motion and, well, a shader. So, let's start with the motion first. In a folder, with right click, I'm gonna go ahead and create a visual effect graph. Rename it to VFX graph underscore Yasu wall and drag and drop it to my scene. And then press the edit button to open VFX graph. And I'm gonna duck this window more or less around here. Right, so this is constantly spawning particles because of this block up here, which we can delete and replace by a burst, a single burst of one particle. And down here, we don't want to output a quad, we are going to need a mesh like I said previously, so let's exactly do that, replace this with an output particle mesh, and delete the output particle quad. Let's already take care of the size, with a set size, set to 1, and here we go, we have this bin from Fall Guys, I mean, now we can control the scale, it's going to be useful, let's leave it right here, and as you can see it's going up, which is not exactly the motion we are looking for. Let's remove the set velocity and say the set lifetime doesn't have randomness by turning this off and say it's 4 seconds, which is more or less the time of a Yasu wall. In the update particle, where it keeps on updating the particle, we are going to use a set velocity. This is where we are going to control the motion. A value of 5 in the Z will push this forward. Excellent. And this wall has a very specific motion, which requires a curve. We are going to need to sample a curve. It's very simple. The time it's going to be for the age of our lifetime, which goes from 0 to 1 and represents this lifetime right here. And that value can be multiplied for now by 1. This is where we are going to control the speed of the wall. Let's connect this to the Z and as you can see it goes a little bit forward. Now, the motion requires a specific curve, for example something like this. It's close, but not exactly what we are looking for. The Yasu wall is really fast in the beginning and then it slows down towards the end of the lifetime, as you can see. That motion is done by adding a key more or less around here and we right click, we are going to say that the value is going to be 0 0.16 and the time 0 0.16. A very specific value, I know. Right click again on this curve and let's select broken so we can control these handles like this. So we want this to slow down towards the end. Now if you press play, it's slow because the multiply is set to 1. If we set it to 5, for example, that's looking better for a Yasu wall. Right, so the motion is already there and the lifetime. Now we just need the mesh. And for a mesh, I'm going to use Blender because it's free, you can easily pick this up. What we need is a clean scene, so I'm going to select everything with A and press delete. And then with Shift A, I'm going to add the mesh, a plane. This plane, I'm going to rotate it with R, 90 degrees, only in the X. I'm going to press G and lock it in the Z to push up a value of 1. As you can see, if I scale this up, it scales from the center. We want this to scale from the bottom. So I'm gonna use Shift Control Alt C and say the origin to 3D cursor. As you can see, it scales from the bottom. Great. Let's scale this only in the X for now. A value of 3, 
for more or less, and then scale in the Z a value of 1.66. You should have a plane like this. Now with Tab, let's enter in Edit Mode, select everything and press Ctrl R, and scroll up to create three vertical edges. I'm gonna select these two edges, scale them only in the X, a value of more or less 1.6. I'm gonna select the edge of the extremities, press G and move it into Y, a small value like 0.3, 0.35. Alright, you should have something like this at this point, and now we are going to add some curvature to this. So with Ctrl R again, I'm gonna scroll up, this time we want horizontal edges, 3, and with Shift Alt, I'm gonna select this edge loop, and push it with G only in the Y to the front. I'm gonna do the same right here, and now we can select the last edge loop on top, and with G, lock it in the Y, and push it to the back. Great, you should have something like this, and this is pretty much what we need. Now with spacebar, I'm gonna search for Shade Smooth. You can also go up here in Object, and find Shade Smooth. One last thing we need to do is control the UVs. So you can properly map a texture to this object. As you can see, this is the UVs currently, they will distort the texture, which is not great. Now I'm gonna press 1 in the numpad to go to the front orthographic view. You can also press 3 to go to the side view, but we want this to be like this. And then press U to select Project from View Bounds. As you can see, now it represents the reality of this mesh more properly. Let's just rename this object to Yasu Wall. Get out of the edit mode with tab and press Ctrl A to apply rotation and scale. And that's it, we have our mesh. Let's go to file and in export, select FBX. I'm gonna turn on selected objects to export only this wall. Rename this to Yasu wall and export it. Now back to Unity, we can assign down here our Yasu wall. And if you press play, you, you will probably see nothing because it is small. A simple trick is to go to your mesh and in the import panel, say the scale factor is 100. And I'm gonna press apply, and still we don't see nothing. And it's very likely the rotation is wrong. I'm gonna look around to see if I find the mesh. Exactly. So, up here in the initialized part, we can use a set angle and say that the x is minus 90. And here we go, it's facing forward. Cool. And now let's get rid of this default particle and create a shader. It's going to be a very simple shader. So with right click on the folder, we can go ahead and in shader graph, in URP, create an unlit shader graph. Rename it to wind shader, for example, and double click to open this up. And the first thing we need is to say the surface type is transparent. And most importantly, turn on support VFX graph down here. To make your life easier, <laughs> we are going to use a procedural node. In this noise section, we have here three noises, and the one that I found to be closer to the Yasu wall is the simple noise. As you can see, we can control the scale of this. So let's create a float for that, and call it the noise scale, default value of 10. And now we need to stretch this vertically and then shrink it horizontally. So we are going to use a node called tiling and offset. Connect it here, and as you can see the tiling controls exactly that, we can stretch or shrink the image. Let's create a vector too, so we can control that option in VFX graph. Noise tiling, default value of 3 and 0 0.2, or 1, 1. And then to scroll this, as you can see, we have the offset, the Y. That's going to be useful as well. Another vector 2 property to control in VFX graph, call it noise speed, default value of minus 0 0.5 in the Y. But to animate this we are going to multiply the noise speed with a time node. And chana, it's scrolling up and it is stretched, but it is still too persistent. We need to kinda dissolve this. So let's connect it to a power node, 
As you can see, this controls how much we dissolve it. Let's create a float property so we can control it in VFX graph and call it noise power, default value of 1 or 2. And now we can connect this to the base color of the fragment function so you can see how it works in VFX graph. Back to VFX graph, we have the shader graph option. In case you don't see it, you can go to edit in preference. In visual effects, you can turn on experimental operator slash blocks and then you can assign your shader. As you can see, this is how it looks currently. It doesn't have any transparency and we have the hard edges all over. So back to the shader. Let's fix the transparency by first creating a color property. It's going to also be useful to tint this however we want. Let's say it's HDR and white with alpha 100 for now. Drag it around here and multiply this with a power node and replace the connection to the base color. Now we can split this and use the A channel, which is the alpha channel, and connect it to the alpha of the fragment so we can have transparency. So it renders the black spots as transparent. Here we go. Uh, now that's getting closer to the SU wall, to the wind wall. To get rid of the art edges, we are going to create a mask where the black areas are not going to be rendered. Let's create a text 2D and call it mask. Sample this. And multiply this with the power down here. And replace this connection to the multiply. And let's save it. Now let's go back to VFX graph. As you can see, you don't have a mask. I'm going to show you in a moment how to create one, but it's going to be something like this. And it's going to fade in and fade out between the art edges and the texture. So let's open up Krita. I'm going to use Krita because it's free. You can download it for free and it's easy to use actually. And we are going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048 pixels. In this empty layer, we are going to cheat a little bit so we can quickly create this texture. For this tutorial, we can paint this layer, the wall layer, with the bucket white. And now, we are going to select the brush tool, B for shortcut, and on the brush presets, we are going to use the hairbrush soft, and then turn on eraser. With more or less 600 pixels for the size, we are going to delete around our texture. Try to make this as straight as possible. I wouldn't recommend this technique, but it's very quick to create a mask like this. Then we can switch the brush to the blender smear and push this up here more or less like this a few times with an opacity of around 45. The size of the brush can be bigger than smaller to create these little details. And once you are satisfied with this, you can export it as a PNG to your project and then use it as your mask. Here you go. It's a very quick technique to create a mask. Now, my values for the noise are 20, the scale, and 3 for the noise power, so it is a little bit more to be more dissolved, and 3.2 and 0.24 for the X and Y of the noise styling, and minus 0 0.6 for the noise speed in the Y. I found these values to be okay for the Yasu wall. But now, what really matters is that we add a little bit of color to this. The Yasu wall has a little bit of blue. We are going to use the gradient. We are going to sample a gradient. And once again, we are going to use the age over lifetime to control the time variable. It goes from 0 to 1. And it fades in and it fades out as well, which is great. And I'm using this gradient right here, which as you can see is also fading in and fading out. But the first key for the color, I'm using these specific values with an intensity of 2. I found out this color to be great for the wind. And for the last key, it's the same color, but with no intensity. Great. And here we go. That's how it turned out. This is a great start. Now, our next objective is to create a background for this. Let's copy this output particle with the gradient and connect it. Up here, it's going to be for a wind main. And down here, it's going to be for the wind back. It's going to be very subtle. Let me disconnect the wind main. The wind back, a major difference is on the noise scale. It's going to be 10. And noise power, it's going to be 2. So it isn't so dissolved. 
We are going to decrease how much it is stretched on the X, 1.9 for example, but increase on the Y. And the color, it is way too bright. I have this gradient. The alpha up here is at 100. And the color, it's the same, but once again, no intensity. And this is the result. If you combine these two together, let me reconnect the wind main, we get a really nice feeling. So that's the second layer. For the third layer, since this is composed of several layers, we can once again copy the wind main, drag it to the right, connect the gradient as well, but this time it's going to be smaller, not so tall, and it's going to be wider. It's going to give a subtle sensation of thickness. 0 0.8 for the Z looks really nice, and 1.2 for the Y in the set scale. All right, that's the third layer, and now we really need to give the sensation that this is on the scene, so I'm going to create a fake shadow for this. The idea is to copy this entire system, call it the ground shadow, delete all of these outputs because we are going to need a quad, output particle quad. By the way, let me turn off the auto so it doesn't keep on compiling, so it becomes faster to work with VFX graph. The output particle quad. We are going to need a set size, set to 1, and a set scale, a set color, and a set color over life to fade this out. Set scale below the set size, and set color over life below the set color, with the composition set to multiply, as well as the alpha composition. The color is going to be black. Oh, and we need a set alpha to control the transparency, by the way. Around 0 0.5, 0 0.4. The idea is to stretch this a lot on the X so it follows along with the Yasu wall. A value of 8, for example. We are going to select this default particle that comes with Unity. Set size to 1, don't forget. Velocity is OK, we also want this to follow along. And we can compile, let's see how it is. Yeah, exactly like this. It's following along the wall. It's a nice little touch. That's how I created the detail, the ornament on the ground for the Yasu. That yellow ornament. One of the final things I'm going to show you is another layer to the wall. We can copy this entire system, the wind main. And it's going to be for the initial small wind. Once again, I'm going to turn off the auto, so it doesn't keep on compiling. The trick here is going to be much smaller in terms of length, but taller. And the Z, it's going to be random between 0 0.8 and 1.2. Speed faster, 0 0.7, minus 0 0.7. And random for the X of the noise tiling between 0 0.4 and 0 0.9. Very small stretch. By the way, don't forget to turn off the constant on these random numbers. Turn it off. Lastly, we can also use a random number between 18 and 22 for the noise scale. You can randomize this a lot, and that's the idea with these small winds. And now it's very important that we push this key to the right and clip a little bit in the beginning. We don't want this to be visible at the start, only after a few milliseconds. It's going to be much faster because it's going to have a much shorter lifetime. 10 for the speed, multiply, but lifetime random between 0 0.9 and 1.1 and, and we are going to have 5 of these in the single burst, you can... 5, yeah and if we compile this oh, and I'm forgetting one thing we need to offset them in the X so they spawn randomly in the X along the wall, so let's use a set position and we are going to use a random number between minus 2 and 2 turn off the constant and connect to the X of the set position in the initialized particle. If you compile this, we get a really nice wall now. Now we are having a lot, a lot more depth to this, more detail to the Yasu wall. You can increase the intensity of the color, by the way, in the gradient of the first key. All right, looking very good. This is a really nice touch and, well, I hope this is a great start for you. I obviously added a few more things but that takes much more time, like the detail on the ground, like sparks in the beginning, the flare, the flash flare, the ground scar, the ground crack, you know? If you want to know more about this, I highly recommend to check out my channel, there's plenty of tutorials and my courses as well on Udemy. 
or you can go ahead and support me via Patreon and you get access to this project and many other projects as well. Visual effects that you can study up close or use them in your game. It's an awesome library of visual effects. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And as usual, a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Alexander Brazy, Alper Aichai, Achilles Benitez, Aviat Tobali, Ruby Dooby Doo, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Diaku, Diego Marcos, Duitron, Effect Yellow, El Sheriff, Fang Striker, Gio, Glitch Goose, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Jairo Garcia, Casey Miller, Lee and Holt, Lutuli, Mark Anum, Michael Gann, Michael Lay, Naru, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Pradip San, Radioactive Bullfrog, Ray Chan, Revenant Games, Trong Fam, Verisuta, Will Hughes, Will Polion, Dong Mao Dong, and Chiang Pyongling. Thank you all for your amazing support, you guys rock and keep the channel going. Hope you have enjoyed this video to anyone who watched this. I hope to see you on the next one and thanks for watching. Bye!